Yo, yo, yo. Hello. Hey, welcome to Curve Appeal TV. Welcome back. Thanks What's for joining. Hey, good to see you, brother. Back in the studio after a, a good week of sales in the car business and uh, lots of developments for uh, us on YouTube, social media, you know, Facebook, Instagram, all TikTok. And uh, we've had our best like 48 hours and well, past week and month uh, up to date as far as uh, our time here on social media as Curb Appeal TV. How are you feeling about it, Phil? Fantastic, man. It uh, fires me up every time I look at it. Yeah, we got, we got that one clip uh, on Facebook people have been sharing, and it's starting to go a little viral. Uh, it's at almost 100,000 views. So Yeah, check it out. It's the uh, salesperson fired at a BMW store. Yeah, if you have any friends, you know, make sure to send it to them. Help uh, support the channel if you're, you know, back to watch us. And uh, for me, this week, for I had got back recently from Hilton Head for a short vacation uh, for a couple of days. And when I got back uh, this past week on Monday, this so far for my almost four years in uh, car sales has been uh, my best uh, sales week. So I had uh, got back Monday. I sold two cars. Tuesday, I was there all day. I had sold three. I was there on Wednesday. I didn't have really any promising customers, but I got lucky. I guess one of the new guys had a, a cheese deal, and they he fumbled it or whatever, and then the customer was upset. So they're like, hey, this customer will online one. You you know take it, and that can be your deal. I was like, all right, bet. <laughs> so I got that one. And uh, then Thursday, I had to go in. Normally my day off, and uh, we were going to plan to film and do all that, but uh, I had to go in, meet a customer for a lease buyout, and it was also my dad's birthday, so I hung out with him for a little bit, and um, Friday, I had uh, another three-car day, new and one used, and then uh, this past Saturday, didn't have too much until a Miata customer came in, and he drove all the way from Alabama, first-time buyer, and um, got that one done yesterday, and that was, what, like almost 11 cars for the week, and that was my best week ever to date, so... Good stuff, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I was hyped, and Lim, I told Lim about it too. He's like, "Nice, man." But uh, you know that that kind of RGM, gets, by the way. Yeah, at, at our at our Mazda store, but it uh, that got me all hyped up. You know, just looking at the stats because you know I've had some good days. You know, spaced out, or you know, like we talked about last time. But that's uh, my best week so far. And I think the vacation helped, to be honest, because yeah. got to kind of recharge a little bit and just you know chill out and uh, how was your past week uh my past week was good average week you know six cars no, that's awesome yeah. that's still really good yeah, yeah. i mean nothing, nothing crazy but at the same time like what you said with vacation recharge i don't know i kind of feel kind of opposite about it okay uh, it, yeah it, at least with me like uh if i've got like like at least, at least these past few months where i've just been grinding it out yeah um, i have momentum and i feel like when i take vacation it kind of throws me off my game and gets my momentum off because i get i when I get back, I kind of slack on the things that I was doing consistently. Yeah. Um, you know, with the discipline and everything. And uh, so it was a struggle to kind of pick myself up. But you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. You know, made it happen. But, you yesterday know. Yesterday I sold, um, yesterday I sold two cars. That's awesome. Yeah. I had I had the one and uh, it was cool because, you know, I'm a Miata guy myself. And me and him were just, you know, just kind of, you know, shooting the, the crap the entire time. And, um, you know, it worked out a deal for him and he left happy and. Drove back with his girlfriend all the way to, well, you may kind of know it's a Colum or Colham, Colham, Alabama. Or Col no, Col Calhoun. Col Coleman, uh, C-U-L-L-M-A-N, Coleman in Coleman County. Linwood knew about it, our GM. It's a real country area from what he described. But they, they drove like three, four hours, came out. What did they buy? What kind of have? It was a, a brand new 23 soft top, black on black uh, club. Did they trade anything in? Uh, no trade in. So he had he like me. He had four Miatas already, and they're all like old like, schools, old school project cars. And you know it was kind of a, a bummer for him though, because you know going into a new Mazda, if you're a current owner and you can prove registration, you know it's current, uh, you can get a loyalty rebate, uh, which helps you know consummated deal. So I was trying to get that for him. And he's like, you know, to be perfectly honest, brother, none of them are, are registered currently. He's like, I got insurance, but. I have expired tags on like all of them. I'm like, okay. I mean, I appreciate it, but uh, I just won't be. Yeah, I won't yeah, be able to qualify you on that one. That's unfortunate. And uh, I mean, you gotta I guess you gotta weigh it out because if you were to go register those cars, you got to pay tax on each of the cars, and it might not outweigh the amount of these getting the rebate. So it probably didn't make sense for him. Yeah, but you had a an interesting customer yesterday. It sounded like you finally got closed out. Gosh, dude. You oh, tell him about it, Phil. Dude, this lady. How uh, did it? Sweet lady, by the way, but just I don't know. She said she got to an accident. I found out recently, yesterday, and this is after me dealing with her for like, like two a, weeks, a, a, about a week or a week and a half, maybe. She got into an accident and she she had got a concussion. And the reason she kept repeatedly, because she would like, 
constantly repeat the same questions over and over again in a different format and really? it was just you know it kind of got very repetitive and it was very tiring i was very patient with her but at the same time like you can only take so much you know? yeah yeah because it's, it's the same thing like even in our text thread like asking the same thing after she just asked it without like looking up to read what i just said you know? <laughs> it's it, it's kind of like it, it's kind of upsetting yeah and then just wanting me to kind of make things happen that just aren't able to be ha or aren't able to happen. She didn't have the best credit, unfortunately. It's going to take this in the bank. She had yeah. a recent uh, repossession. So all these things factor in to like, you know, what car she can get and things of that nature. But yeah, so like she kept wanting me to, she didn't like any of the selection that we have. And she was wanting me to go out and look for her cars. She asked me about a 20, a 15 to 20 year loan. On oh God. A, on a, a car loan, which is you know undoable. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> banks won't do that on a yeah, mortgage, but not a not an auto loan. Typically, eighty four months, the longest you'll see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, and that's with great credit, and it has to be the right car, you know. Of course, yeah, which unfortunately uh, didn't meet the standards that. Uh, what uh, What did she end up buying? So um, we got her approved on uh, three cars. Actually, we got her approved on a twenty seventeen Hyundai Tucson, um, twenty twenty one Mazda CX five. And a 2020 CX-9, all of which required three different types of down payments. Yeah. You know, because uh, the bank will only allow her to have so much borrowed money. Right? Yeah, so yeah, they so. gave her uh, conditional approvals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So at the same time, so she didn't like the Hyundai Tucson at all. She says it was too small. <laughs> and to force, I, I don't know, maybe guilt trip me into like maybe trying on a different car, which I would have been happy to do regardless. She drove an hour and through traffic just to come there. And this is after we've closed. This is She's texting me, wanting me to stay after hours. What day is I'll, it? Someday last week. Okay. Like, All the, right. week. Yeah. So I'm sitting there and I'm waiting 20 minutes for her to, to come. And I'm being like super nice, right? Uh, we've already closed. Everybody's already gone. It was dead at the end of the night. So there's no reason to stay for a customer. I'm waiting outside of the parking lot just to help her out. Wow. Yeah, that's it, quite the salesman. Yeah. I mean, you know, it is what it is. So but then she goes over my head. She walks up to the, the sales tower. Oh, just straight, straight to the manager? Yeah, and this is after I'm, like, trying to, like – Yeah, be, uh, be on And then side. all the other managers have gone for the day because it's after hours. It's just me in the gym, and I'm trying to stop her from going up there, but I didn't do a good enough job. And she – and obviously, we were okay with, like, her – we test drove a car. We didn't take it for a long test drive. And then, long story short, she ended up purchasing it. And we got her done with the car with 7000 down, and she's happy. She yeah, left, she left pretty happy, and she had nothing bad to say about me. It was just the uh, process. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she said that she told him straight up that I was working really hard for her, and which I was. I wasn't. I mean, I wasn't lying or anything like that. Yeah. It just, yeah, it comes to a point where, like, you can only do so much, and it, you feel like people are starting to disrespect your time, and that's not okay. You yeah, because like, at the end, you could just move on to the next customer. I fought really hard for her, and you know, obviously, we got the deal. So it is what it is. And then she had brought up this dude, and I don't know about about you guys or like they're out there in the car business or have this happen to you where like for example you have a male friend in the picture and they want to think that they know how things work and and, not, and not, they want to they want to show the woman some type of dominance and it's not like a you're not still like a not like they're in a relationship but just like maybe i don't even know i didn't ask i, I, I didn't want to get too personal i just i don't think i was there as far as a report but the, the dynamic okay yeah but nevertheless she brought this dude along and the and obviously the dude wants to like try to say that he's like the one that's going to get her the deal, the one that's going to do this, that, and the other, be the man, yeah. you know, whatever. Sitting there pointing out every little scratch and ding that's wrong with the car, picking it apart, talking crap about the dealership, about used cars, and, and, and what, what she should and shouldn't do. When he has nothing to do about, like nothing to do about anything, doesn't know her her credit situation or anything like that, or the concerns that she brought to me when she came there, and I was generally trying to solve her problem. And just being overall like very disrespectful, yeah, like in my face. Like, and I stopped him right there. And you know, I like it comes to a certain point. You, know, you 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 provide customer service, but at the end of the day, you have to have self respect. And you can't let somebody come into your place of work and disrespect you blatantly, or else nobody will. Yeah, you can't just be a pushover. You have to be confident. You have to stand your ground. It's very important. For example, like he he came at me, and then I I, I told him, look, with all due respect, sir, I'm gonna stop you right there. It's not gonna go the way you want to go. Okay, you're not gonna you're not gonna sit here and 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 treat me this way. I just I refuse. Yeah, controlling the situation. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And you kept it calm too. You know, didn't didn't get out of line in any way, and uh, still you know got the deal. So, good job. That's what we do, man. Yeah. Make it happen. Yeah. So we're on track for well, a really, really good month in sales. You know, social media, and everything. So, oh, and by the way, nickname. Nickname. Said customer. Bunion Bogue. Perfect. 
Yeah, that one, that one will stick for a while. Yeah. All the all the managers are gonna remember her, but you know we appreciate her business still, nonetheless. Yeah, kind of doubt. So what else, man? Well, outside of the car business and you know social media, all that type stuff. My project car, my 1997, has been sitting for I don't know two three months now, and you know it's all all due to an oil leak on the cam uh, seal at the front top of the motor, which is not like impossible to work on, but the issue that is going on with it is the oem cams on this turbo motor are wearing out the seals so i had these custom you know made to order for that particular uh, motor cams from a company called maruha in japan uh, they make really nice miata mainly specific and mazda uh, products so i waited on those to come in but it doesn't say that they'll even be like at the warehouse like to ship out from there until like end of august next month so I probably won't even see the cams, like the parts I need, until like September or something. So that kind of sucks. But that other that's kind of what I got going on. So I, I want to, you know, once I get that, we can make some really cool clips for the channel. I'll show you guys, you know, the car. Because it really does get, you know, driving down the street a lot. Gosh, <laughs> a lot of intense. It's so much torque. It, yeah, it, it's a little rocket ship. It's, it's got a 1.8 built motor with a Garrett turbo pushing about 15 pounds of boost. And it's 295 coming out the rear wheels on the dyno so it's a you know a little rocket ship that weighs like 2500 2700 pounds or so you know and uh how much did you spend putting this thing together to be perfectly honest way too much but the the car itself i you, bought second hand for like eight grand okay and then the motor build i did a lot of work to the chassis redid it basically everything underneath the car so total all in including the car itself probably almost 30 grand bro like really a, a lot because you think it's going to be like, I thought initially I was going to be like, maybe like 20 grand car and parts, everything 20 grand. Yeah. No, nah. never like that. No, nah, like, you got a project car. Things are going to happen. Yeah. And that's over the course of like a year and a half and you know, a lot of time and resources. Yeah. Resources and just putting a lot of effort into getting it as nice as possible. So that's why I'm, it's kind of bugging the crap out of me that I'm just sitting, you know, I just look at it, just sitting in the parking lot, waiting on these last few parts to come in. And you know, once they get here, I can put those in. I'll have a transmission and a new differential waiting for it to to go into the car, and it'll be it'll just be so cool. There's not too many clips on our YouTube. There's some on the older posts, but it's got a custom interior, custom body, paint, motor, and I think it'll make some really cool content, you know, for you know YouTube and uh, just videos and stuff. Too. Yeah, we got a lot of cool things planned. We write down uh, five ideas daily. Yeah, on what we kind of want to go for on the channel, and we pick them out, and we'll be happy to you know consider them and maybe make some some funny videos for you. Yeah, you guys seem to like the the cool like uh, stuff that we hear from people in the business, yeah, um, and things that are happening there, like the crazy stuff. Because let's face it, the car business itself is a it's a crazy atmosphere. Yeah, it's something. If Jersey Shore was a profession. <laughs> It'd be the car business. I, I have no doubt in my mind. There's so much drama and cool things and funny things and ups and downs that happen in the car business on a daily basis. That's, that's facts. Just, I don't think it's matched in any other industry. Again, I, I'm not familiar with every industry, obviously, um, but I can speak from experience, and it's uh, it's very entertaining to be there. Yeah, because, I mean— You're, You are there for a lot of hours, and you know, most people are stressed. It's, you got to make the most of it, yeah, too. Yeah, but it, at the same time, like, some of the things are just like— you just feel like you're in enmity— if, you're in MTV. Yeah, that's fair. And, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I think here soon as, you know, things progress, we'll be able to, you know, help other new salespeople as they give us more, you know, responsibilities and maybe do some training for people. That'd be cool. I've done or, that. Yeah. And that'd be something uh, for y'all watching too. If y'all would be interested in maybe some like sales training videos, you know, five to maybe 10 minutes, or um, even if you'd be interested in us putting together like a, a set of them or like a course, I'd be open to doing that. Yeah, I know. I know you guys might think that we're green peas here, right? Because we're new to the social media game. But I can assure you, we are sharks out there. Yeah, I, you know, la last year I sold almost three hundred cars, total units, everything, and you know, it, it's almost a car a day. And it, it, you know, it takes a lot of, a lot of discipline. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, we've had the crazy years, crazy weeks, crazy days. I've I've sold seven cars in a day. I've sold as much as yeah, that's, uh, that's almost wild. forty cars a month. I mean, I know you've sold over thirty cars a month as well, and but, I know you've had. You've had five, six car days. Yeah. You had one the other day. Yeah, my my best month, I think, was 32, 33 cars. 
and tell me about um because I, I i don't think i was there like maybe what 2019 december for you oh you're that, talking about when uh like me and the uh the anthony the other guy yeah we have, so so tell me yeah tell me about that because i wasn't there we had a little competition going i ended up losing i'll admit it here i got second place but man we were grinding yeah so Dude, tell me about it we were grinding this the is... month started off strong and him and I, we're, we've always been extremely competitive, and we've always fought for the number still, one spot. Still are, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we all are. And I think that's what makes the dynamic of what we have pretty great. Uh, you know, So it's funny. That December, man, we were selling so many cars. We just hit the ground running. and Mainly uh, new or used? Uh, we were selling a lot of both. Um, okay. But I think I sold mostly new. I think out of the almost, I sold 38 and a half cars. Okay. Out of those, I think I sold 22 new. Gosh. Yeah. yeah, I sold a lot of new cars, but back in back in that time, it was 2018. I'm it was a different. The pay plan was different. We were we weren't on a uh, we had a different general manager at the time. We weren't on like a commission pay structure or on a flat pay structure. Okay, um, I think we were getting paid. What was the max you could earn on a car? The max you can earn on a car, I think, would have been like 400 bucks. Maybe like 450 of like Zurich Shield or something. Yeah, like. Or yeah, if you had but, types of spiffs or anything, but like less that. than five hundred dollars, less per, than five hundred dollars. No matter yeah, if you no made what. like, but let's just say, let's just say for healthy average, anywhere between two fifty to three hundred. That was your flat fee for selling your car, and, um, and then it was still draw against commission, of course. Yeah, um, and this, I'm thankful this happened because two months prior, um, we had gotten in trouble or whatever. The GM was just upset with us about something that we did, and he, he for um, like two months straight leading up to a month before. I had that big month. Um, we were splitting deals with our BDC department. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I still have. Um, that's I, I still have. I'll bring it to you. See if you want. To, if you guys want to see it, uh, commission that's, structure of me uh, selling twenty-seven uh, cars and um, me having like five or six, maybe seven um, splits with BDC. Good lord! And what? Yeah. That's and, it, and it wasn't like anything crazy. I know. I can remember two of them vividly where the customer called in. They just set the appointment, and he was already on the way. And yeah, then I had to split the deal. Like, that's, like, super frustrating, right? And uh, I didn't know what the grosses were because we were getting paid a flat fee. Commission structure was different. But I would like to think, based on the looks and faces of, like, our sales management team and the finance team um, on how I was doing, they were pretty ecstatic. So, yeah. like, the grosses must not have been that bad. And the, and, and that then, and I think still now, like, a lot of, you know, new car dealerships, they get bonuses for selling you know so many new cars that our commission structure was based on that so we had flat fee per selling a car and then we had unit bonuses um, we had one at 10 15 and, and 20, 20 cars yeah. and then every car after 20 cars you got an additional 100 flat um for each car sold yeah so it adds up we were, I mean, you made good money but i'll and i'll tell you guys what i made on my big month uh you, you it, it's kind of laughable when you think about it because if you like nowadays if you sell 38 cars oh my um, god bro at a, at a commission structure dealership it's like the, the money is just for stupid right especially if you know what you're doing yes certainly but i was young in the business at, and, and i wasn't as mature as i am or as advanced as i am so i didn't really understand but, sure no i get it yeah I, I thought it was as good no, as it gonna, i was making more money than i was ever making in my life so i was like oh man this is yeah great. it's great yeah it's fantastic you know i i, I didn't think to think that the grass is green on the, on the other side and i still have it. I, I like where I, learn, I work and i wouldn't trade it for a little yeah it's because it's, it's it's grown and developed into something that's that's really becoming it's more than just the money i guess now money is nice of course but i'm learning a lot and i wouldn't have learned as much as i did had i not made that sacrifice My, anyways going back to the story because we keep veering off on these little side tangents so was i um but i think he ended up selling more cars up until Christmas than I did and I had to pay the I was playing the catch up game selling uh that last week of between Christmas and New Year's which is a very hectic week in the car business yeah. for most stores I think and definitely for our store I sold the most amount of cars that I ever sold in a week I think it was 15 or 16. Good lord yeah so for me yeah recently it was 11. It That's was a lot. wild bro. It was a lot and I, I, I probably sold more but I just couldn't handle the workload and I had no help. Yeah. So I had to pass off a bunch of people. Yeah, like, just hand them off. Hand and, them off, yeah. And, and some I, of handed, them, I remember handing off a couple closed deals to people. And just like take it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I, I would always have uh, two to three customers at a time, which I don't know what I know now. And my commission structure was different then. So obviously those customers, unfortunately, didn't get the best customer service. But I know now um, if you take the time and have exceptional customer service and if you have a commission pay structure, not only will you get paid, but it'll continue to pay you over time i remember some of those customers came back and ended up not wanting to work with me because i didn't give them the, the attention that 
um, they deserved at that time. Um, well, that's really good that you can, you know, recognize that yeah, and, yeah. you know, like, grow from it too. grow from that, like, type of behavior. But anyways, um, so we were just hammering out deal after deal. Um, the deals were crazy. We were selling a lot. He ended up with, I think, 45 cars, 44 yeah. and a half, and um, I that's ended up wild. with 38, 30, 38 and a half, I think is what that's I That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and um, that's during that time, I think we only had eight salespeople, nine. No, we had. Like, probably eight No, we 10. had more than that. We had more than that. I think we had 12 salespeople. Yeah, it's about and ten to twelve salespeople is what we had that whole month. I think we sold we sold just under two hundred cars. I think we sold and you and Anthony sold about half of them. We sold half of them, yeah. We sold no, we sold if we sold yeah, we sold about half. Maybe it was 150, 160 Yeah, cars. I mean that's that's wild. That really is, bro. Good job. Yeah, and then to the, now the juicy part. So January rolls around, and um, so we get quarterly money from Mazda. And I had a lot. Of, yeah, all those uh, new cars. Yeah, you know, RDRs, punches, spins, whatever you guys want to call it. Added up throughout that quarter because I just sold so many new cars that quarter. Like, like so many new cars. Yeah, just ridiculous. Yeah, I think I sold like I can't even. Dude, I I don't know. I was averaging like fifteen to twenty new cars per per day. month. Per and month. and like for example, you know, during you know my best year, which was last year, I averaged it was like maybe. 10 to 12 13 per month new cars yeah and but you also came in at a different time yeah um, the deals back then were a lot more competitive and you were selling a lot more units but you weren't rewarded on like more volume more gross yeah. quality and things like that you're you're just more volume yeah, yeah. right so and my payout from the dealership i think for selling 38 cars my check was like 15 6 and that's uh gross uh, before, uh, before tax before tax yeah and then uh, with the Mazda money, I was averaging uh, like twenty, probably a little more. No, I was averaging a hundred dollars. Oh, okay, okay. No, uh, no, like a total Mazda money for the quarter you earned how much? Oh, for the quarter. Um, you got paid out at the same time. Yeah, I, I probably got paid like another what for eight, the quarter? Another yeah. eight grand. Yeah, that's awesome, bro. Got that not as dramatic, but we got the coming at the end of yeah. this month. I think I ended that month with like. Was just over 20 grand yeah and looking at the bank account like nice <laughs> yeah, yeah no yeah bro um and then they used to give us well it's different now but then you had like a, a actual mazda like credit card or debit yeah card yeah so that they yep. would put your spiff money on and um it only had like a thousand dollar limit so it took me like a literally literally like a week and a half to withdraw all the money from the mazda card and put it in my bank account yeah and now now they got it where you can just click a button and transfer it yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know i just wanted to see all the money in my uh account the main at account one time. Yeah. yeah so i <laughs> paid the commas I, yeah. I probably paid like a hundred bucks and just trying to withdraw <laughs> right. all the money not too long after that i spent all half of it on a trip that i took to to europe how was the, the trip was worth it yeah yeah, I do it again. I mean, the trip was was fantastic. I met a bunch of cool people and got to party. It was lit. Yeah, I'm sure they're they're probably asking you too, like you know about what you do, and you just had all, all that all that yeah, momentum. I yeah, I I'm not even a drip in the bucket for the money that those type of guys had. Where what uh you know, where like it wasn't even no wasn't even fair. The guys there they they don't yeah, they have so much money, way more money than they would do with. Yeah, well, I think that's just about everything I, I got on my mind now. We got about half an hour or so. Anything else you want to say before we close out? We can uh, keep it going. Dude. We don't have to stop it. Well, that's the show, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you thought. Um, if you like this style uh, show a little bit better uh, of us just kind of talking about our past in the car business and going over what we've learned and what we're doing to get better, and you know, let us know in the comments. We'd love to. Your feedback helps us a lot, um, not only with the channel, but getting to know you guys. We, we definitely love the opportunity to do that, and we appreciate the support. Um, and we'll continue to appreciate the support. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time on Curve Appeal TV. Peace.